else all the same thing. I'm going to be on my own, doing my own thing. If I want to go to class, I go. If not, I won't go. Nobody can tell me this, tell me that. I'm my own boss. I'm got free. I am set free. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. Well, I got free, okay. Free on the day. Had a, had a meal ticket. I don't think we still have meal tickets. Had a meal ticket. Where my food was paid for. And about three days later, I got tired of the meal ticket. And I wanted to eat real restaurant food, you know. Well, my mind kind of changed about the fourth day because I had no money left. <laughs> and so I had to call, not my mama, uh-uh, my daddy. You could have saw for touch, my mother was. And I, your dad said, well, how you doing? I said, well, daddy. If you could see, he could see my expression on the phone, well, daddy. I don't have any money left. He said, well, I'll send a little money in an envelope. Don't tell mom. No, I'll send a little money in an envelope. <laughs> so he sent a little envelope to me, you know, ten dollars. Ten bucks back then was a lot of money. So I know what it means to go out and think you're a hot shot and you're really a cold dud. <laughs> you think you got everything figured out? Your life, your oyster? Yeah, but you got to be able to swim to get to it. Okay. <laughs> well, here's what happens. The younger son goes and spends his money, the Bible says, in riotous living. Rebellious living. Living that he knew his dad wouldn't approve of, mom wouldn't approve of. It was sinful life. Now we all can sit here today and name a list of sinful life. Uh, sex outside marriage, alcohol, drugs, you name it. We can list all kinds of things that are riotous against God's word that we know are not the right thing to do. That lead to destruction. So he got out there, he lived a riotous life. He ran out of money. Had nothing to eat, nowhere to stay. He was impoverished. He never had been there. Because his father had always taken care of everything he'd done. So, he hires himself out to a native of that nation, that country. Now, he's a Jew, okay? He hires himself out to a Gentile. And this Gentile has pigs. And he hires a guy to take care of the pigs, feed the pigs. Now, have you all been around pigs? Anybody y'all been around pigs, ain't eh? One of the first churches I ever talked to about coming to be a pastor over in West Kentucky, they wanted to show us the parsonage and show us the church. We said, okay, fine. And so Christy and I went out there with the, this group of guys, and I got in the car, I thought, gosh, what is that smell? Something's died. What is it? I told Christy, what is that smell? She said, I don't know, but sure it's bad. And so it was pigs. The guy next to the church was a pig farmer. God bless him. How could something smell so bad and taste so good, okay? But he was a pig farmer, and the stench was terrible. Now, this guy hires himself out with the only job he can find, a Jewish man working for the unlawful Gentile, unlawful touching a pig. Not only is he touching a pig, he's so hungry, he wants to eat the slop the pigs eat. Have you ever seen a pig eat? One of the reasons they call a pig, they'll eat anything. And normally you just throw table scraps out, the garbage out, and they eat the garbage. And so this pig was eating the pods that said that the, the pods that he gave the, the animals, and they, he was so hungry, he wanted to eat those. Now can you imagine going from being in your father's house, well off, well taken care of, never having not enough to eat, not, not having enough clothes, everything provided, and because you made a choice to go away from your father, your family, your heritage, your belief, your culture, you wind up in the pig pen. Now, the good news is, sometimes it wasn't for the pig pen, we wouldn't get out. Because sometimes you have to wake up and say, this, this young man, he said, you know, in my father's house, the servants are treated better than I'm living now. The least of the servants my father has is, is being able to, to do that. And so, here's the point. The point is that if we do things our way and not the Lord's way, we're going to end up in a pig pen. And the pig pen is not a pleasant place to be. Okay? Well, he comes to his senses, you know, may I go back to assert my father's house? He wouldn't want to go back to be a, a, a son again. He said, if I can be a servant, that'd be great. If I can just be a servant in my father's house. So, he makes a decision to change his life, change his direction. To go back to his father. Now the father here is God. And you've got a, a son that was lost at home. And a son lost in the field. Okay. You can be lost and be around the church all the time. Still be lost and not over the Lord. And so he makes a choice to go back to his father's house. Well. The Bible says that when he goes back. 
He didn't have to go back to the Father and make amends and all that type of stuff and apologize. The Father sees him coming across the field and runs to him. Now that shows us redemption through Christ because Christ doesn't wait for you to get to a certain moral level. Mm -hmm. You have to have a desire to come back to Christ, to come to Christ, to accept Christ. He meets you on your way and on your journey. And so the Bible says that as the young man heads toward his father's house, his father meets him. And I've often wondered, how come? How did the father know he was coming back? And here's what the Lord laid on my heart. He's going to look at that door every day. Every day. Wait for that son to come back. And that's when God waits for us. He waits for us to come back and be who He wants us to be. So today I want to talk about uh, this encounter of the, of the prodigal son, as it's called. And there's, there's three things that we want to think about. Rebellion, repentance, and redemption. Now, what do you think the meaning of rebellion is? Anybody have a personal experience? What is rebellion against God? Usually it's when you're looking for self and your eyes are kind of clouded and you no longer really see your, your plan for God's plan for your life. What word would you, if one word to describe rebellion, what would it be? Disobedience. Okay. Mm -hmm. Disobedience, okay. Okay. What else? I can't think of one word, but I know when I was living in rebellion, it was like everything the opposite that was godly. The opposite of everything godly was what I was in. Head first. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, would a good word be fight? Or fight against God? Oh, yes. Fight against... Uh, if you're supposed to be fighting against God, you also fight against other people. Yes. You're not happy with your life, happy with other people. Mm -hmm. And you blame everybody else. Especially the people that love you. That's who you're fighting with because they are the ones that are really caring and they're the ones that are going through all the pain watching you do that. Well, others. Have a lot of hate in your heart. Hate in your heart. It's yeah. for yourself, dude. Yeah. It is. I mean, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of hate in there. I'm not saying yeah. that. Yes, it is. It's towards, but it's, right. it's in you. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Other, other concepts here. What do you think about rebellion? When it's selfish. Selfish, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, one of the things, that, that's exactly right. One of the things that I'm taught is in doing a home Bible study, don't be afraid of silence. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all know me, I don't even wait for you to get your comments before I comment, you know what I'm saying? So for me to wait, like, it seems like an attorney to me, okay? <laughs> But what else? What, John, what do you think about rebellion? I don't know if I can describe any better than Christine did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think we do that? Why, why do we disobey? We're smarter than anybody. Yeah. Right. yeah. We think no one at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the prophet son thought he did it all too, you know. And, and, and you know what? When you get a little money in your pocket, you get real self-righteous, you know. You got money in your pocket, money in your bank account. I don't, I don't have a need. But here's what I've learned also through the years. No matter how much money you have, there is a point of return you can lay it all while you're out and you're gone, you know. And it's all wasteful. So, so rebellion means just to be instant. means to, to do things your own way, think you're smarter about this, and to be hurtful. And there is a lot of hurt in your heart, you know. People strike out to others because we don't really, we rarely blame ourselves. We get right with God. We blame other people. Well, if mom had done this, dad did this, if this had happened this way, this happened this way, you know. I mean, if I had had a better job when I started out, I started out at the drive in theater. Paducah Chief Drive In had a big Indian on the front of the building, and no matter which way you drove, his eyes followed you. It was pretty strange. <laughs> And I took tickets up. Took, sh, sh, sh. That's where I learned to sight read words by their mouth. I couldn't hear them driving and watch the screen. But I couldn't hear it, so I'd be, oh, okay, that's what that means. What is saying? 35 times I watched the same movie, I finally got what the dialogue was. But I, I thought, well, that's yeah, that's kind of a pretty crummy job. Then it got better. Twice a week, I had to change the marquee sign. Out on the highway, like this 30 foot by a 20 foot marquee sign on a ladder, big letters, and I'm scared of heights. So that was coming up. 
So, rebellion. How about repentance? 